Hello, and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today is day 94, and I'd like to discuss the critical angle. Now, if we remember back to our qualitative discussion of refraction, we had less, more, less, and more, less, more to determine whether or not an, a light ray will bend closer to the normal line, get a smaller angle, or away from the normal line and get a bigger angle. Well, when we bend away from the normal line, there's only so much we can bend before we're back into the original surface. If we're back into the original surface or the original material, we're not refracting anymore. We're bouncing back. We're reflecting. So there's a value at which the light will turn away from the normal, and that's as big as it can get. We have a name for that, and we call that the critical angle. And that's the angle of incidence, which will produce an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And every material has its own critical angle. Now, remember, though, this is only when, an, uh, when light is traveling in a more dense material. So you have to be traveling in a more optically dense material to a less optically dense material, because that's the only time where light will bend away from the normal. So you have to be from a more dense to a less dense material. If that's the case, there is a critical angle for the material. For example, if we're in water and we try to enter into air, there is a value where the light cannot bend farther than 90 degrees. Anything bigger than that, it will just bounce back. So in order to find the critical angle, we use Snell's law and just slightly modify it. And what we're going to do is use N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Now, sine theta 2 is always going to be 90 because we want the critical angle to be the angle of incidence that will produce refraction of 90 degrees. And remember, N1 has to be bigger than N2 or this won't work. So N1, let's say, is water. So we have 1.33. And then sine theta 1, we're looking for the critical angle. Equals N2, let's say it's going into air, that would be 1 times sine of 90. Now in that case, the entire right side, if you remember, is going to be N1 was 1. Sine of 90 is 1, so we have the whole right side is a 1. Now a lot of problems deal with light trying to escape into air. And if that's the case, um, you'll often see the critical angle equation as sine theta c for critical equals 1 over n. And that's any time that air, uh, air is involved. Typically, I like to use Snell's law where sine of theta 2 is 90 because then it can apply to any situation. It's possible that we're going to try to have uh, a diamond inside a swimming pool and the light in the diamond is escaping into water. And although it's not um, N2 would be 1, N2 would be 1.33. So I like to use the, the non-modified version where sine 2 is always 90. But you'll see in a lot of textbooks, um, the critical angle equation is sine theta c equals 1 over n. But remember, n2 has to be bigger than n1, and that's because it has to move away from the normal. Now, if you're bigger than the critical angle, what happens to the light? Well, what happens is the light is actually trapped inside the material. We have a fancy name for trapped. It's reflecting. That's all it's doing. But when it reflects, we have a fancy name called total internal reflection. So if you're bigger than the critical angle, the light doesn't escape. It actually stays stuck inside the material. So light can be trapped inside water trying to escape into air. Light can be trapped inside plastic trying to escape into air. And that's the basis for fiber optics. We're able to send light over long distances through plastic um, strands, uh, really thin strand, strands of plastic, by utilizing the fact that the light will not escape because of the critical angle. And we try to ensure that the angle hitting any part of the fiber optic cable is bigger than the critical angle. As long as it's bigger than the critical angle, it stays trapped inside the material. So if you're in a swimming pool and you're looking directly up from the bottom of the pool, hopefully you're holding your breath at this point, what you'll see is the sky. You start turning your head, you'll see the trees, you'll start seeing the side of the pool, but eventually you'll get to a point where you no longer see outside the pool. You are trapped, your view is trapped inside the pool. You'll start to see the side of the pool. You'll start to see the bottom of the pool. You have passed the critical angle. So anytime you try to look past the critical angle inside a swimming pool, you'll find that you can't see outside the water, and all you can see is inside the pool itself, maybe the side of the pool or the bottom. The liner is probably what you'll see. So the critical angle is the basis for um, fiber optics. Now, the law of ref 
flexion is still going to hold true. So angle going in is going to equal the angle out. And I would re be remiss to say that three things still occur at every boundary. You have some reflection, some refraction, and some absorption. So even though light is trapped, the majority of the light is trapped, but some is going to escape even past the critical angle. You will have some refraction. Some will escape, but the majority of the light will, will bounce back in. So anytime you have the critical angle, the critical angle is just a threshold. If the incident ray is less than the critical angle, it will escape. If it's greater than the critical angle, it will be trapped. If it's at the critical angle, the light will actually travel along the boundary. Still trapped, it won't escape, but will travel at 90 degrees. Now what I'd like to do is a couple of sample problems at this point. We'll find a critical angle for different materials and see how um, being trapped inside different materials affects um, their characteristics. For example, diamond is going to trap light the most. In fact, the critical angle for diamond is in the low 20s. And what I'll do in a few minutes is show you the actual value for that on the whiteboard. But because of that, and because jewelers know that diamond traps light at 24 degrees or so, what they're going to do is cut the diamond so that when light enters the top of the diamond, it's going to bounce around inside the diamond and leave out the top. So a good jeweler will actually cut a diamond so that it keeps the light bouncing around as much as possible and comes back out the top. Most people are going to view a diamond from above. So that's the sparkle that you're seeing when you look at a diamond on a ring. On the other hand, we can take other materials that may have high index of refraction, let's say zircon, which is part of cubic zirconium. Well, if we cut that to its critical angle, we're going to be able to mimic the effects of the cubic zirconium and make it look like a diamond. So, so jewelers know that too. So cubic zirconium, which is much cheaper to produce um, and much cheaper to purchase as well, can be made to mimic um, a diamond by just cutting it a little steeper. So cubic zirconium looks just like a diamond um, if it's cut properly. And I'll tell you, there's one person right now who uh, doesn't know the difference between diamond and cubic zirconium. That's my wife. Just make sure you don't tell her. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be in big trouble. So for now, let's get the whiteboard out before I say anything else I'll regret. And we'll calculate a couple of critical angles. For diamond, cubic zirconium, which is what my wife is wearing, and uh, maybe a couple other materials like water, for example. Let's get onto the whiteboard now. Thank you. Now, the critical angle is a special case of refraction where we go from more to less dense materials. As we go from more to less dense, the angle gets bigger. So if we have a situation where we're in water and we're trying to get into air, at whatever angle it comes in, we have to get a bigger angle. So theta 2 is going to be greater than theta 1. Now ultimately, you'll have theta 2 be 90 degrees. And that's what the critical angle is. It's the special case where theta 2 equals 90 degrees. And we can still use Snell's law. But what we're going to do is figure out what incident angle produces that. So what theta 1 will create a theta 2 that's equal to 90. That we call the critical angle. So let's try to find it. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. N1 is water, so it's 1.33 sine of, I'm looking for in this case, equals N2, which is air, sine of 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. So what we end up having is 1 sine 90 over 1.33, when we divide both sides by 1.33. So 1 divided by 1.33, second sine, second answer, we end up getting theta 1 to be 48.75 degrees. So for water, the critical angle 
is just about 49 degrees. That means that if I were to send a light ray that was bigger than that critical angle, let's say it's 60 degrees, if I try to do that calculation, I'm going to end up getting an, an error because the angle of refraction will be bigger than 90. And we're going to try to find the inverse sine of something that won't work. If that's the case, anything bigger than this number, so 49, 50, 51, 52 degrees, it won't refract at all. It will actually stay trapped inside. And if you remember back a few days, I was showing you light trying to escape from a triangular prism. When it did that, there was an angle I was rotating the laser that it actually stopped escaping. And that's when we exceeded the critical angle. Now, if I have this curved piece of plastic here, what I want to show you is that if I were to shine the laser into this plastic, there's light coming out onto my hand at the bottom. There's no longer light escaping, if I hit it right, from my hand. If I put it here above, it's on my hand. If I put it into this curved piece, it's now escaping and staying trapped inside the plastic and ultimately will hit my hand at the bottom. This curved piece of plastic is really the principle behind fiber optics. So the critical angle is used when we send light rays to represent electrical signals and then ultimately data through fiber optic networks. This is obviously much bigger. This is not to scale. Fiber optics are really th thin strands that look, they're about the, you know, the thickness of a human hair. But as the light ray is traveling and this is plastic of some sort, so the index of refraction may be you know, 1.4, 1.5 depending upon the plastic. If I send this light ray in and hits here, it's trying to escape into the air, but this angle, if I draw a normal, is huge. So it stays trapped and it bounces again. And it stays trapped and it bounces again. And it keeps bouncing in the tube and ultimately gets to its final destination. So the fact of the matter is we use critical angle every time we're using a fiber optic network. Um, and that's able to send um, signals at the speed of light. So it's really fast. So that's critical angle. And what we'll do is we'll calculate a few more critical angles. I found water. Let's look at two more. All right, let's find the critical angle for two more materials, diamond and glass. And we'll use flint glass for this one. The end of diamond is 2.42. Flint glass, N is 1.66. And we'll say that each of these is going into air. So if that's the case, we're going to do N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2 for each. N1 is going to be diamond 2.42 sine theta 1. I don't know what it is. Air is 1, and that's the sine of 90. So 2.42 is going to be divided into 1 because sine of 90 is 1 and 1 is 1. So 1 divided by 2.42 second sign second answer getting 24.4 degrees so the critical angle is pretty small for diamond now that means that any light ray that's bigger than that 25 all the way up to 90 is going to be trapped inside the diamond and diamond cutters know that and they take it to their advantage and make sure that they cut the diamond so most of the light is trapped. As it's trapped, it's going to bounce around inside the diamond and ultimately come out the top. And that'll sparkle more. On the other hand, we have flint glass. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. This side for most problems, if you're dealing with going into air, is going to be 1. So it's 1.66 sine theta 1, critical angle, 1 sine 90. So now I'm going to do 1 divided by 1.66, second sign, second answer. I'm getting 37 degrees. So even if we were to cut flint glass the same as a diamond, more light would be trapped inside the diamond. So it would not sparkle as much. So flint glass wouldn't be a good substitute for diamond. 
Now we have cubic zirconia, which has an N value of 1.92, I believe. So that's going to be a lot closer. So we can simulate um, the sparkle of the diamond using cubic zirconia a lot easier. This would have a much larger shape. It would be oversized and not look um, similar to a diamond. But this is a test case. This is an angle at which the light will either be trapped or not. Now, if it is bigger than that, so for example, if I have this angle coming in and this is 40 degrees, well, it's trapped and you end up getting what we call total internal reflection. And that bounces back and this would be 40 degrees. It's still the law of reflection. It's just a special case when it's trapped inside a surface. Now that, like I said before, is why um, fiber optics works and we use, use this principle um, in fiber optic cables. So those are two more critical angles. You can find the critical angle of any surface if you know its index of refraction.